and welcome to a new tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make an image similar to this one. So what we are going to do is we are going to convert a simple 2D structure into a 3D structure. Um, to do that, we are going to use three different programs. First of all, we are going to use Blender to render basically the final image. The second program that we are going to use is Inkscape as a program to prepare the file that we are later on going to load into Blender. And then of course we are going to use a program, in this case it's ChemDraw, to create uh, the structure basically. Um, before we jump right into the tutorial, I would like to mention that this is not a beginner tutorial for um, Blender. So you need to have a bit of uh, knowledge how to navigate in Blender, how to scale things, how to re rotate things, for example, and where to find objects and things like this. I'm not going to go into detail on that, but I'm going to show you in detail how to produce the file and how to modify uh, the object later on in Blender, like changing the color and stuff like this. Good, without further ado, I would say let's start. And to do so, I'm going to pull up ChemDraw right away. And uh, what you see here is basically just the structure, how I would like to have it in the final version. Make sure that you already set the width of the bond to your likings and also um, the font type and the font size um, of the letters over there. If everything is fine and if you uh, like the way you designed the structure, you can go ahead and save it. In this case, we are going to save it as an image file. So just navigate to the place where you would like to save it. Make also sure to set the resolution to a reasonably high value. This is just because we are later on going to convert the pixel image into a vector image in Inkscape in order to save it in an appropriate file. Um, so I would recommend something uh, starting from 300 TPI up to 600 TPI. I'm going to keep it at 600 TPI. And then you can go to save, say OK here, and that's it. Good, now we can go already to the next step, which is just opening Inkscape. This is just the default setting of, um, um, of how it looks like when you open it and there is nothing or not much you need to change or basically nothing you need to change. What we would like to do now is to import um, the file that we uh, created previously. That can be done by going to File Import, navigate to the um, to the folder where you put the BNG and then just say open. Also here for the import options, you don't need to change anything, just say OK. And then you see at the very bottom here, there is a new uh, image appearing. I'm going to zoom in a bit because it's quite small. Also, you don't need to worry about the size. You could, of course, uh, enlarge it so it's easier to see. I'm going to enlarge it because it's easier for you to see. If you enlarge the image, also make sure that you keep the proportions intact, because if you don't keep them as they were before, you might run into issues later on because it looks distorted, of course. The next thing we are going to do is select the, the path menu over there and go to trace Pitmap. Then there is a new window appearing, which looks something like this. Also, you don't need to change anything uh, in those settings. Just keep them as they are and click OK. This was the part now where your pixel image was converted into a vector image. That means there are no pixels anymore. Everything is stored uh, or can be saved as a vector image. And this is exactly how we would like it to be in order to import it into Blender. So you can close that um, window. And that's basically all we need to do in Inkscape. So we go to File, Save As again. And the important file is now, or the important part is now to save it as a SVG file. So make sure to select SVG over there. Again, navigate to your folder and save it 
like this. So this is everything you need to do before you start loading your um, file into Blender. The way you prepare those files in Inkscape is a bit more complicated as it would be, for example, if you have access to Adobe Illustrator. For Illustrator, you can directly copy paste the file from ChemDraw into Adobe Illustrator and save it later on as an SVG as well. And if you are using Inkscape, you have to do a step more, which is just converting um, the pixel file into a vector file in order to save it as an SVG. So uh, if you have access to Illustrator, it's a bit easier, but as you saw, it can be quickly done with Inkscape as well. Great. So the next thing is go to Blender. As you saw, I already tested the tutorial and I already uh, basically um, I made an image with the same molecule. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to um, just simulate a new start. And I'm going to delete everything. Just a hint, um, on here on that side, you see which keys I'm using. If you want to reproduce the tutorial step by step and use exactly the same steps, pay attention to uh, that area over there. Good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to load the molecule. That can be done by going into File, Import and select Scalable Vector Graphics SVG over there. And then, of course, navigate again to your file, click, uh, select the file and click on import. It looks like nothing actually happened there. But if you paid close attention, you saw that there is an extra, extra thing actually appearing over there. And also, if you sa start zooming in, you see there is a tiny, tiny version of your molecule lying there, which is hardly visible. Um, what we are going to do now is first enlarge it uh, to make it easier um, to work on it. So I'm going to press X for scale, scale it up a bit. There is one thing that's a bit annoying as well. You see that the, um, the set of like the origin is not in the middle of the molecule, but it's uh, in the middle of the screen here. So this is something I'm also going to change quickly. So select your molecule, go to the transform menu or the edit menu over there and say um, origin to geometry. Now the origin is in the middle of uh, our object or of our molecule, and it's way easier to handle like this because if you would like to rotate it later on if the origin is not in the middle it's quite uh, um, tedious to do so the second thing i'm going to do because it makes handling also way easier is i'm going to put it in the middle of our screen and then i can go ahead and scale it up even further good also um something i did not mention i'm doing the rendering in the cycles engine so in case uh, your final render looks different, make sure that you are in the Cycles uh, render engine. One thing I'm also going to do right away is I'm going to change the color of the molecule. So I'm going there to the Material tab and I'm just going to delete the color that is like this black color that's given by default because it's quite hard to actually see the color um, if we start to do our first renderings. Good. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to give the molecule um, that 3D look as it, that you saw uh, in, in the preview of the tutorial or at the beginning of the tutorial. And uh, this is something that can, can be done very, very easily. As I said before, um, the molecule was now imported as an SVG, which is a vector format. That means it is constructed out of paths. This can all, is also visible if you just hit tab, you see that um, if I zoom in again, you see that the, the areas are just framed by paths. That means we can easily extrude those paths. I'm going to hit tab again to leave the object mode. This is something you can also do by changing the modes over there. And if you go to um, the data uh, tab over here, you see you have the whole menu 
um, they are where you can modify the paths. And in the subsection, which is called geometry, you have the option to do an extrude. And this is exactly what we would like to do. So if you click and track or change the value uh, by hand, you see that actually we add some kind of body to our object. And this is exactly what we would like to have. I'm going to set it, let's try it something like this 0 0.002 you need to be a bit careful with the values there because you see that already small values go a long way and make it quite large good so let's see how that looks if I press render now so you see that we already have some quite nice uh, 3d element over there in order to catch the shadow nicely what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, a plane going to set it to the middle as well and I'm just going to enlarge it 20 times so that it covers uh, the complete area there and if I go to render again you see that the plane is nicely catching uh, the shadow that we create now also what you also see is that um, in contrast to the object that I showed you at the very beginning or the image that I showed you at the very beginning is now everything has the same color. So um, the moieties, for example, have the same color as the complete structure. This is something I would like to quickly show you how to change as well. Um, for that, we are going to go into the edit mode again. That can be done here or can be done by just hitting tab. And to make navigation easier, I'm going to go into the top view. So what we would like to have now is we would like to color, for example, the alcohol moiety over there in a different color than um, the, the core structure of the, enzyme, uh, of, the, of the molecule, for example. So for this, we are going to switch again to the material tab over there. And now, of course, you need to select the part that you would like to change. First of all, I'm going to T-select everything by just hitting A and then I'm going to hit Control and just drag my mouse around the moiety that I would like to change and I'm going to add another color there. So I'm going to say plus, I'm going to say new and now I'm just choosing, choosing a, randomly, a random color like red. Don't worry, you can change all of those values later on. One important thing is that you hit Assign. Now we can do the same thing with the other two moieties, but of course I would like to color them differently. So I'm going to select it again. I'm going to hit plus for another color, new again, and I'm going to cho choose like a random blue. And again, don't forget to hit the sign. Then of course uh, the rest of the structure is left. So let's have a look how it uh, looks like. You see that the core structure is by accident also colored in red, the same red as we have here. So what we are going to do now is we are going to select the rest of the structure. There you go. So now the core structure is selected. I'm going to hit plus again, give it a color. I'm going to go for a gray and hit assign. And if we go to the rendered view again, you see now that we have assigned different colors to different selections, basically. And uh, if you don't like the color, for example, for the alcohol moiety, of course, you can just change it uh, in the menu over there. So I would like to have a more like pinkish version of it. Well, that's a bit much. Well, let's go for it. And let's say the blue should be uh, a bit more, a bit lighter like this. And there you go. That would be now the final version uh, of our molecule. Of course, what you can always do is you can um, change the way the uh, molecule is oriented in space. So for example, if you would like to um, have the molecule standing on your plane, oops, like this, for example, you can do all the, the modifications that you can normally do in Blender. So now it would be standing on the hydrogen over there. Of course, you can, you can also tilt it a bit. 
ein Fings leicht ist. I'm going to go back to the flat version over there. Also, changes on uh, the size of the molecule can be later on done by changing the value of the extrude function over there. And that's basically it. I hope the tutorial was helpful for you. Um, let me know in the comment sections below if you have any questions or if I missed something. Also, if you have a request for a future tutorial, you can also let me know in the comment section down below. Until the next time, I hope you have fun with your scientific design and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye!